For the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Eternal Father. I offer you the body and blood, the soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world, for the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Eternal Father. I offer you the body and blood, the soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world, for the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Eternal Father. I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world, for the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Eternal Father. I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world, for the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One. 
eternal God, in whom mercy is endless, and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Amen. Our Lady of Mercy, Saint Catherine. Please be seated. The, the chaplet of mercy accompanies the entrance of the remains to the church because the, the requiem mass is a plea for God's mercy for the soul of the departed. And as we pray this prayer on behalf of the deceased person, we get consolation knowing that our, our prayers are, are heavenwards, even though we are here very sad, desolate on earth. I welcome you to St. Eugene's Glenock on this uh, sad afternoon. It is the 12th of May. We are in the fifth week of the Easter season and we are burying uh, our beloved parishioner, uh, Kathleen Divine Nee Elliot. You have gathered with great sadness and I welcome you and I'm glad to offer the Holy Mass with you for beloved the Kathleen, here she prayed, here she attended, here she worshipped the Lord. We do it all for her today because she did it for everyone who went ahead of her. Our readers this morning, this afternoon, will be married. So the readings will take place here at the, the stand beside the baptismal font and Billy offering the psalm and Kathleen, second reading. Do I have all of you present? You're all here, are you? Okay. And the prayer of the faithful will be by Alana and Ella, grand children. Our music today is by Kira McMacken and our accompaniment by Noel McGindley. And at communion time, the hymn Set Your Heart on the Higher Gifts will be sung by the grandchildren. Ella and Caitlin. If you have a mobile phone, this would be a good time to switch off. They do ring and Kathleen would not be impressed. <laughs> For Holy Communion, I'll serve in semicircular fashion, so if you simply semicircle the altar rails, I'll come to you person by person. If you're not a Catholic, I would love you to come forward and ask for a blessing, simply cross right hand to left hold, shoulder, left hand to right shoulder, that's the international requesting sign for a blessing and I'll be glad to do so. If you are a Catholic who's been keeping your distance, shall we say, from the Mass, you too should come and ask for a blessing. You have to be in the state of grace to receive Holy Communion and you don't want to do detriment to your soul at the most solemn moment of, of a Requiem Mass. So. I'll ask now little Caitlin to bring the image forward. We have a photograph of Kathleen. Are you here, Caitlin? And we'll place it at the head of the coffin beside the floral arch. The remains are being overlooked by Our Lady. This is the month of May, Mother of God, overlooking a beloved mother. eternal rest grant unto Kathleen, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Requiem Mass will begin in a couple of minutes time.
the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Requiem Mass for Kathleen Divine Nee Elliot, let us in a moment's silence call to mind our sins, acknowledging that one day it will be the funeral of each one of us. You raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. You give light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty Father, eternal God, you have strengthened us by the mystery of the cross and promise us a share in the paschal mystery of your Son. Mercifully grant, we pray, that your departed servant, uh, Kathleen, may be gathered into the company of your chosen ones. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. I invite our readers, Mairead, Billy and Kathleen, to lead us in the word of God. Isaiah. Fear not, I am with you. Be not dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you and uphold, uphold you with my right hand of justice. For I am the Lord, your God, who grasps your hand. It is, it is I who say to you, fear not, I will help you. I have brushed away your offences like a cloud. Your sons, like a must, return to me, for I have redeemed you. Can a mother forget her infant, be without tenderness for the child within her womb? Even should she forget, I will never forget you. See upon the palm of my hand, I have written your name. Yes, in joy, you shall depart in peace. You shall be brought back. This is the word of the Lord. Response, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures when he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to receive my dripping spirit. Response. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and staff. With these you give me comfort. Response. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you ha have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. Response. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing God shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. Response. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing God shall want. Second reading. 
a reading from the first letter of St. John. Let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the anointing sacrifice for our sins. Since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Judas had gone from the table, Jesus said, Now has the Son of Man been glorified, and in him God will be glorified. If God has been glorified in him, God will in turn glorify him in himself and will glorify him very soon. My little children, I shall not be with you much longer. I give you a new commandment. Love one another just as I have loved you. You also must love one another. By this love you have for one another, everyone will know that you are my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Our community has once again lost a cherished parishioner. Today, Kathleen Devine, whose mortal remains lie before us. Here we have a woman who is held in very high esteem, a person rich in faith, in hope, in love. We gather in her honour, in her parish church, to offer requiem mass for her kind and gentle soul. Kathleen attended everyone else's funeral when she had the health to do so. She looked after all those who have gone before us and many here present. It is our duty, our privilege, to be in her presence in this church on her final journey. 
The Easter season gives us hope. Jesus is risen from the dead. The glorious Alleluia that we have just listened to is our expression of our faith that death does not and will not have the last word. No, life, love, God will have the final say. That is why we gather here every Sunday. Each one of our Masses is a, press, a preparation for our Requiem Mass. Mine, yours, and all people's. And in every Mass, we pray for the dead. Each Mass offers prayers for the holy souls during the Eucharistic prayer. But the Requiem Mass focuses on a particular soul. And so we pay tribute and thank God for this wonderful soul called Kathleen Divine. She was Kathleen Elliot when she entered this world 85 years ago. Kathleen Nolin Elliot, that was in Artigarvan, her home ground. And there she was the beloved daughter of John Elliot and Margaret Elliot Negreve. There were five children, Kathleen and her four siblings, uh, three brothers, uh, Jim deceased, John deceased, Lawrence deceased. Those are the Elliot sons. And then our, our own Mary Gallagher, Nee Elliot of Old Castle Road, not able to be present because of senior years, but she is following us in spirit and online. So we offer our sympathy to Kathleen's sister, Mary. They were all reared in Alton Arte Garvin and attended school in Clock Corps, First Confession, First Holy Communion, Confirmation, all in Clock Corps in the parish of Lech Patrick. And when little Kathleen became slightly older Kathleen, she met this fine man called Gerald Eugene Devine from Douglas Bridge, who we all remember very fondly. Gerald died on the 12th of July, 2019. The whole community gathered in his honour, Kathleen II, that day, four years ago. So when they married, then the, the home place in Shannon Road, Douglas Bridge, became Kathleen's new home. She was delighted to move to her new husband's territory. And there, the fruit of their marriage is uh, four wonderful children, two sons, Desmond and Jim, two daughters, Mairead and Geraldine, and ten grandchildren, Molly, Billy, Alana, Lily Rose, Danny, Ella, Hannah, Caitlin, Abby, Jessica. Having grown up on a farm at Arta Garvin, Kathleen had a great work ethic. She brought her energy and zeal to the divine household when she married Gerald and came to this parish in 1972. Milking cows, feeding calves, nursing sick animals, and recognizing the signs of sickness in the animals. These were part and parcel of her routine immediately that she came to this district. But dedication was at the heart of Kathleen's life. She never sought any earthly glory. She simply desired to do her duty faithfully and peacefully every day. Kathleen had a big 
heart. And she shared her kindness with everyone. She was everyone's mother. So that hospitality was extended daily to friends and family. Over the years, little cousins, as they came on the scene, and nephews and nieces came regularly, not just to visit, but to stay for holidays in her home. All the children were drawn to Kathleen because of her kindness, her cheerfulness, her positive approach to everything and everyone. Her supreme patience and understanding meant that she won everyone's confidence. She was a listening ear for the distressed, and people went away consoled. Be good to one another, Kathleen always said. Be good to one another. Indeed, this was her own practical but intelligent interpretation of Christ's words at the Last Supper. Today's Gospel, John chapter 13. Love one another as I have loved you. Love one another as I have loved you. Kathleen made it simple. Be good to one another. <laughs> that was how she lived. That's how we all remember her. These words of Jesus, love one another as I have loved you, formulate the new commandment. It's given by Christ to the apostles at the Last Supper, the new commandment. And Kathleen lived the new commandment, for she loved Christ, loved her neighbour, and was kind to all creatures. She was not in the least materialistic, and was content at home, and never wanted to be anywhere else, not even to travel or to see the world. Douglas Bridge was the centre of her world, and she was a peaceful neighbour, a devoted wife, an outstanding mother and grandmother. My memory is of her constant compliments and gratitude. I first met her in Altnagelvin Hospital in 2015, and she, ill in her bed, was complimenting me, the visitor. <laughs> I considered her a model patient. Yes, her health declined gradually, but she never complained. When she was discharged from hospital, she joined my first Friday list, and I had the privilege of bringing her the sacraments in her home every month all these years. Surrounded with uh, little grandchildren, I got first-class entertainment each time. <laughs> Kathleen smiled all the while. She was at home with them, and they with her. The youngsters knew that Granny was uh, gentle, serene, harmless, <laughs> well-balanced, dependable, faithful, genuine, sincere. We are deeply saddened by Kathleen's death. Still, we rejoice in the beauty of her life. Even her dying was dignified, mirroring the faith, hope, and love of half a century of marriage and 85 years of noble living. Despite the many crosses she carried, Kathleen was a happy woman, destined for eternal joy. Dying in the month of May, Our Lady's month,
Kathleen reminds us to implore the intercession of the Mother of God. Kathleen, a true mother, is deserving of our prayers because she prayed for everyone down the years. May her good, kind and gentle soul enjoy the fullness of beatitude, the everlasting reward of the woman at prayer and at peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Our Lady Queen of the May, Saint Catherine. For the prayer of the faithful, I invite Alana and Ella to lead us in intercession, and you may stand. Let us pray with faith and confidence to God our Father, who raised his Son Jesus from death, that he may give comfort to the living and eternal rest to the dead. The response, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In baptism, grant and receive the light and grace of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead her over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Our granny was nourished at the table of the Saviour. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Many people suffer from sickness, loneliness, and bereavement. On this day of requiem, we pray that we may find comfort and healing. Lord, in your mercy. Our family and friends seek comfort and consolation, heal our pain and dispel from the darkness and doubt that comes from grief. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the grace of a happy death. May we remain true to the faith for the rest of our days. Lord, in our mer- your mercy. We pay, pray for Granny and for all our relatives and friends who have gone before us in faith. May we be united in the glory of God's kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, hear our prayer for those who have died. Free them from all their sins and let them share in the fullness of salvation in the kingdom where you are Lord for ever and ever.
Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of God. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, root of the vine and work of human hands. It will become a spiritual dream. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty God. Look favourably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant Catherine may be taken up into glory with your Son in whose great mystery of love we are all united, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up in your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ your Son. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we Proclaim, holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given of for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, 
he took the chance. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Donal our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Kathleen, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome then into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
to thee I have come. Before thee I stand, sinful and disorderful. Do not, O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise my petitions, but in thy clemency hear and answer me. Amen. O Mary, conceived without sin, our Lady of Night, Saint Joseph, Saint Catherine. O Remus, renewed by this life-giving sacrament, we pray, O Lord, that the soul of our sister Kathleen, to whom you gave a part in your covenant, may be purified by the power of this mystery and rejoice without end in the peace of Christ, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Please stand for the prayers of commendation. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister Kathleen. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of Kathleen, your servant. In the sight of this world, she is now dead. In your sight, may she live forever. Forgive whatever sins she committed through human weakness. And in your goodness, grant her everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our sister Kathleen to her place of rest.